Hey guys, this is Kayla with Becky's Graphic Design in Nashville, Tennessee, and today I will be showing you how to use Canva.com to create a storyboard for your children's book. So here we have Canva.com. Um, now there are two different versions of Canva. There's the free version, which doesn't cost anything. All you have to do is sign up with your email. And then there is premium Canva, or they call it Pro, I think. Um, and Pro Canva comes with a little more business-oriented um, tools and extra access to content like stock photos. Um, for what we're doing today, we can use either Pro or free. Either version will work. I'm going to go ahead and log into Canva here. I'm going to click on this button here. That's the login. Here I'm going to enter my email and my password. Okay, here we are logging in. This is your Canva dashboard. Um, this is where it's going to show your most recent projects um, and things that you have created. On the sidebar here, uh, there's a several different options. This brand kit, this is part of the premium Canva. Uh, here we can see all of our assets and our colors for Becky's graphic design. Uh, you can also upload fonts and actual um, hexadecimal colors, but we don't need to worry about this today. All we're doing is creating a storyboard for a children's book. I want to go back to home, and we are going to go over here to create a design. I'm going to click on this and then go past all of this stuff down to where it says custom size. I'm gonna click on that, and I'm going to change this measurement from pixels to inches. Now, if you are one of our authors working with Becky's graphic design, uh, probably by this point you have already chosen a height and a width for your book. If you're doing a standard children's book, it's probably going to be an 8x10 book, possibly a 6x9. For this example, we're going to assume that we have an 8x10 children's book. I'm going to enter the height here, that's 10, and I'm going to enter the width, but I'm going to double it. We are going to be making a storyboard for the inside of the book, uh, not the outside. So the interior panels are going to be two pages side by side like this. That's called a spread. So that means when we create this document, we need it to be double the width of the cover of the book. It can't just be the actual outside dimensions. It must be the interior dimensions. So if we want the final book to be eight by 10, I'm going to double the width and make it a 16 by 10 uh, design. Here is our first canvas. Uh, I'm going to go over here to file and change a couple of options. I want to show the print bleed on this book. Bleed is what happens at the edge of your document. I added this image here. If you can see, if I push this image into the corner of the document, there's still a little bit of white space here where the bleed is. This is the trim line. So when this document goes to get trimmed, I need to make sure that this picture goes all the way to the edges. Otherwise, there will be a white space at the very edges of the paper where that trim left a little bit there. Um, so you have to account for that at the edges. You have to go a little bit over the size that you need. I'm going to go ahead and delete that, but I'm going to leave the bleed setting there, this little uh, border on the exterior. There's a couple of other options you can use in Canva as well. You can uh, apply margins, guides, and show rulers. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and leave these off for now. I shouldn't need them. All right, so... Let's go ahead and put a divider down the middle of this paper so we can kind of see the differences between page one and page two. I'm going to search over here for line. I'm going to search in elements. If you're another fellow designer out there, don't try to hold shift or control as you do this because things get a little wonky when you do. <laughs> Holding shift 
maintains an aspect ratio while resizing. But for now, I just want this at 90 degrees. I'm going to pull this down on either side. And then I'm going to transform or move it into the middle of the page. Okay, now we can see here that we have page one and page two. The purpose of creating the storyboard is to help your artist or your illustrator figure out what type of illustrations and how they need to format them. A lot of children's books will have an illustration on one side as such, and then on the other side they will have text on the opposing page. We can see here that my line has disappeared. I'm going to move this gray box to the back. So I'm right clicking and then clicking send to back. Now our line's back on front. I'm going to go over here and grab a text box. I'm just going to add this body text here. I'm going to click and add that to the document. I'm going to make it a little larger. And then let's write a little bit of a story. We're going to say Bob took his bicycle to the park. Okay. We want to give our illustrator an idea of what we want to go in the image. So I'm going to go over here to elements and I'm going to search for bicycle. Let's pick this one here. Now remember, we are just creating a storyboard. These are not the actual illustrations for your book. It's just helping your illustrator to get an idea of what you want in the book. A lot of these elements here, these clip art sort of things, you can change the color of them by going up here to this little block and just selecting a new color. I'm just gonna pick this dark blue. I'm going to size this down and put that here like that. All right, now we need an image for Bob. I'm just going to search for stick person. And we'll let this guy here be Bob. I'm going to drag him into the image as well. And size him down. Bob can stand here with his bicycle. Now we said that Bob took his bicycle to the park. So let's add a couple of trees as well. Yeah, let's get these trees. And we're going to change the color of those as well. Okay. Now we have a very simple uh, layout here for our illustrator to look at. The illustrator can now look at this and create this image in their own style with whatever specifications you have for them. But now they know what text will be paired with the image that they are creating. This can really increase um, the understanding of your story. If there is a disconnection between the text and the image, sometimes the story doesn't flow that well. So making sure that the artist and the writer have a clear understanding of each other's work really helps the uh, final product come out much better. So we've done page one and page two here. Let's add another page. I'm gonna copy this line over. I'm gonna do Control C, scroll down, and then use Control V to paste that. It should paste it in the same location. Now let's say for this spread that there's no words. This time we're going to create a, an illustration that goes across a spread, meaning two pages, not just the one. I'm going to go ahead and grab my background color here. I'm going to copy it over and I'm going to send it to the back. Next I'm going to stretch it all the way across like so. Now the illustrator knows that this is intended to be a full illustration. Let's grab Bob and his bicycle. I'm going to copy them down to this page. Let's make them really big. You see here how the illustration can stretch across two pages. We just want to make sure that no important elements, like say Bob's face, are right in the middle. It could look a little funny in the final product. Other things like the middle of this bicycle, that's okay. We'll leave that there. 
Let's say that Bob sells some birds. We'll add those over here, up in the sky. All right, here's our spread, that two-page spread with no words, just illustration. All right, and let's add one more page. Now, if we don't want to start all over again, I could instead go up here and hit duplicate page, which then sticks it directly underneath the page I copied it from. We can use these two little arrows here to navigate this page down to the bottom. If you no longer want a page like this blank one that I added, you can click on this trash can icon here to delete it. All right, so now I have a copy of page one, which is not page three. Let's write some new text here. Let's say that Bob bought hot dog. Let's get rid of our trees. Maybe we'll mix up Bob and his bicycle. Let's see if there is a hot dog stand here on Canva. Huh, would you look at that? There actually is one. Okay, we'll add in this hot dog stand man. If we want to make it look like Bob is standing in front of the hot dog stand, I'm going to send this to the back. And as you can see, there is a hot key for the order of things. That's control open bracket. All right, now it looks like Bob is standing in front of the hot dog stand. And there we go. All right, so now we have a three page story about Bob taking his bicycle to the park, seeing some birds and purchasing a hot dog. Now I want to show this to my illustrator. So I'm going to go up to download and I am going to download this as a PDF. We can use the high quality or the standard one. Um, it doesn't really matter. If you have a lot of images, you might want to use the small file size one or else emailing it might become a burden. This one should be okay to use the high quality PDF print. I am going to include the bleed on here, so I'm going to checkbox this and I'm going to go ahead and download it. Another feature of Canva is that you can use a shareable link. Um, if you don't want to download the actual file, people can view this file online. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and X out of that. Now we can see down here, I have my finished PDF file. Let's go ahead and open that up and see how it looks. There we go. On the corners, you can see these little crop marks. This is indicating where this paper will be cut in the final production. And we can see that we safely have a line of extra color beyond that trim mark. That means that the bleed is going to go all the way to the edges and this white space and this little bit of extra blue will be trimmed off. All right, I'm happy with this now and I'm gonna go ahead and send it to the illustrator. All right, thank you guys very much. This has been a tutorial on how to create a storyboard in Canva for children's book authors to show a storyboard to their illustrator. Thank you very much. You guys have a good day. Hope to see you soon. Bye.